Hi, everybody. Welcome to Habitat Now. I'm your host, Aaron Shea, and we are in October of 2021. Thank you for traveling through time with me to get here. It has been an amazing experience uh, visiting all the artists and having these talks since I think, you know, May of 2020. And uh, 2020 is done, almost 2021 is done. And with the end of 2021 comes the closing of the uh, Not Grandma's Glass exhibition. We are in deep planning for 2022. I have a lot of the arts picked out. They've chosen their months and we're gearing up for next year's event. And we'll be selecting the winners for this year's event. And those winners will be selected to uh, fill the last four months of 2022. This competition continues. We've done some interviews for TVs talking about TV shows and uh, the news talking about this event. And a lot of the artists have been an amazing, put together amazing presentations of work and experiences exposing them to the world. This particular artist who's joining me today, Dean Allison, does not need an introduction. Many of you know him already or have work in your homes. He is an amazing talent that is the best of his field and I'm so honored to have him today. Thank you, Dean. I'll welcome you in one second. Let me share my screen and get this ball of rolling. So, um, <clears throat> new title screen, huh? We have America's first contemporary glass art gallery. Corey really likes that. And so I'm gonna keep putting it up in front. Join us at Habitat and forge your legacy. We're working on our marketing here. Um, the 50th presentation, and the 50th anniversary exhibition is on display at the Habitat. So if you haven't been here, here's a small glimpse. It's a much different exhibition than you've ever seen here with more work and space dedicated to each artist. There's less artists invited to the show, but there are plenty to see uh, in the exhibition. And you can tour the vault, which is our back room. So just a quick glimpse of two of the rooms. You can see there's a, a, a plethora of Michael Taylor's work. Um, Tim Tate on the far left, Emily Brock, who actually came in. It was great to see her. So if you haven't visited the gallery, call me. I'd love to give you a personal tour uh, and come to the exhibition. Glass Art Fair continues online. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm sure you all have. Uh, amazing treasures from around the world by the artists in our Habitat family. Continuing uh, the exhibitions that are up of artists in our family, uh, Steve Lynn at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art, open now, uh, called People I Admire, Some People I Admire. Uh, Latches or Boyajev, his exhibition Movement is at the same location at Fort Wayne. And artist John Miller has a blue plate special. We went up and saw it during our, our VIP weekend. It's a great exhibition to see, as well as a display in the museum is breathtaking. So I'm going to quickly talk a little bit about Dean Allison's exhibition. It is on the notgrammasglass.com website, but we'll have a link I'll paste in directly to the, the show, which is hosted on Artsy. It was the most easiest way to do this for Dean, but he had a lot going on. And you can see all of his work and pricing on that website. So, so I talked about we're in, we're in I wrote September, I got to write October on this one, but we're getting through the year and I'm looking forward to the conclusion of this exhibition. So. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dean. Dean, say hi to everybody. Hi, everyone. Um, I am going to try to share my screen. I'm gonna, I just wanna give a little bit of a, a taste of, you know, Dean with the guys here at the gallery. And it's, it's great to have you, Dean. So I'm gonna stop sharing mine and you're welcome to take over and share yours. Okay, let me see. Let me get you guys all on this and make sure everybody can see it. Looking good. Okay, click the play that button. And let me find. Okay. okay, can everybody see that? Perfect. You got it going. Okay. So, thank you guys for all spending your Saturday afternoon with me. I am um, just want to try to get this. I have something in the way of my image right there. Okay, my name is Dean Allison. I, um, I uh, really appreciate being here. I appreciate the always the support from Habitat and all the people that come in and continue to collect glass work, continue to collect glass, artwork in general, and just be um, enthusiastic about people that make things. Um, I am a figurative sculptor. Um, uh, I work with port the portrait, uh, the figure, and glass. I have always been interested in people and the human condition. Oh, it's not working. She's stuck on a slide. You want to try closing and open it back up again? Yeah, I'll try that. Give that a whirl. I'm going to close down my PowerPoint while you're doing that. There we go. So I'm not able to get it, Aaron. It's like not letting me escape either. Oh no. 
Okay. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you stop sharing your screen until you can figure it out. I'm going to kick you out. There we go. No worries. Give it a whirl. Try to see if you can get it to act up, and we'll, I'll, I'll take over and just give a glimpse of what I have in my PowerPoint. It's uh, okay, give me a minute. Okay, that is it's working on my end, so I'm going to try it again. Okay. Okay, so can you try, try right. the next. There you go. You're working. Okay, so my I am. Um, I come from a big family. Um, I've always been interested in people, um, the human condition, um, and as far as aesthetically and artistically, I've always been interested in in painting, painters, paint, oil painting, um, figurative work, um, specifically. Francis Bacon, I love that he works in a very macabre style, um, a very sensual macabre style. I, um, I love Egon Schiele. I love his, his work specifically for his line quality, the dynamic that he does with figures, um, their interaction, um, and the, the negative space in his background um, is really important to me, how he works in that, that, with that composition. Um, Pablo Picasso for all the styles that he can portray and specifically how he confronts the viewer with his figures. Um, and Lucian Freud for his muted color palette, his, um, his, his different cream tones, his whites. Um, I've always really been in love with the way that he uses color and specifically that muted color palette. My earlier work was was mostly um, was mostly blown into molds, and you can kind of see that it was um, it had this kind of macabre look to it um, as the the figure started to get more defined and be about a specific people. They were um, they started to be a little bit more of that that muted color palette that I talked about that from Lucian Freud, um, but also still kind of airy and macabre in their presence. I went to grad school at the Canberra, um, Australian National University in Canberra in Australia. Um, I found glass as an elective when I was an undergrad at Illinois State um, in a painting program. I, um, I really liked glass because it was kind of a, this industrial trade um, that was kind of a craft and art um, involved in this, this trade form of, of making. I, uh, my dad is a retired electrician and I, I really enjoyed the fact that it was a trade that you could also use as an art form. So when I found, um, when I found glass, I, I learned to, to do glass blowing. Like I said, some, a lot of my earlier stuff was mold blown, um, functional things. Um, and when I was thinking about trying to, you know, excel my work, where it was going to go, I chose Canberra because it was, um, they were, they had a really found, good foundational program in glass and they also um, you know, were known more for their, for, for casting, for teaching casting. I wanted to learn that. So when I went there, I was, um, I used to ride my bike over to the Canberra Glassworks from the, uh, from the, the school and, um, I found this guy's work in the museum and was really inspired by it. It's Ashan. He's a he's a Chinese diaspora um, from the kind of the Tiananmen Square incident over to Australia, and he was doing these um, these uh, figurative busts that were um, in porcelain, so they're a little bit smaller than life size. They're they're made from an alginate and, and into a porcelain, and he has them like. Um, he has them all tattooed with Chinese symbolism and heritage and kind of place and where nationality. Um, they're beautiful pieces. If you've never seen his work in, in, in uh, person, it's, it's really gorgeous stuff. Um, so I was really influenced by that. And I, I really wanted to then start to learn how to cast and take an impression off of life. So I started experimenting with a lot of different materials, latex, silicones, um, you know, ways in clay to make molds. Um, and you know, plaster, life casting, all that stuff was of interest to me and in how, to, how to figure it out. 
and take a take a document off of a person, almost like a three dimensional um, picture. Um, I when I when I was done with um, grad school, you know, I really th had thoughts about staying in Australia. I, I loved it there, um, but was offered a job at the Glass Studio at Penland in North Carolina, and um, working there, I found that I could practice a lot of different processes. Um, process is actually very important in my work. Um, the processes always kind of lead to, you know, the reality of what the piece is, um, how it's actually displayed, what it, what it becomes. So at Penland, I was able to experiment with a lot of different processes, um, meet a lot of different people and work in teams, which is, you know, in my work, I, I needed a lot of help in the, in the exploration and experimentation of things. Um, so a lot of that stuff was, you know, blowing, you know, using different processes of blowing and um, figuring out different ways to uh, decorate a bubble and taking molds in and out of the kiln and ladle casting and then joining bubbles onto the ladle casting and just trying to find what was working and what wasn't. And then also doing more exploratory um, research into, you know, technologies in, in, in life casting and special effects. So what was like, what was state of the art? What was, what was the, the new technologies in special effects works? And it was, you know, different uh, platinum silicones that didn't need release agents. Cause when you take life casting, you know, the, if there's a fine line between making something look dead and making something look alive. And I, you know, I want my work to celebrate life. Um, and I have very visceral reactions of when somebody says, oh, you know, that's a death mask. That's, that's, that really bothers me because it's, yeah, we're all going to die, but it's, it's, um, it's about celebrating life. How, uh, how long are those people inside the material there when you are uh, working with it, working on them, as we say? It depends. It depends on how much of the mold. Um, I've learned a lot through, through over time of doing, you know, a lot of different molds and a lot of different um, interactions with people. It depends on the size of the person. It depends on what kind of pose or what kind of um, gesture I'm trying to capture. Um, a simple face mask can be 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole, you know, like bus could be 45 minutes to an hour. Um, usually I don't want to have a model sit more than 45 minutes to an hour. An hour is long. So the, the shortest and the, 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 the smaller the mold I can make and then piece it together, which I'll show you some, um, some pictures of in a little bit. It's, it's easier for the model and it's actually better for me because then I can, if I don't get something, I can go back and try to capture it again instead of trying to do a whole huge model that the model's sitting for. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting uh, layer of trust your subjects have to have with you. <laughs> oh, definitely. You know, you know that's, a, that's an important part of the process. It's, you know, it's like, it's trying to understand the human condition and by by using a life model, it's like it's like figure drawing. I'm really into painting. I'm really into life life um, uh, the the life model. So using a live model is kind of like traditionally in line with 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 making for me. So using a live model is something that I have a, a direct experience with. It's a, it's an intimate experience. It, it's a it's a definitely a, a sense of trust. Um, and then, you know, it's a chance happening of what I capture and then how I can use that for a, a piece. While we're on the slide, I got a question from someone in the audience explain the difference between the blue and the white material you're using in these photos. So the, the, the blue is actually, it's what I was talking about, a, a newer technology in silicone um, that doesn't have a release agent on it that, so I can really try to capture what's under there without it being smothered in Vaseline and looking like it's a mold of somebody smothered in Vaseline. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a mold that's as close to the skin as possible that I can get that's safe for the, the model. And then that is very flexible. So if I take that off, it's like a Halloween mask. Then I have to have something rigid on it to keep its shape, which is the plaster that's in multiple parts that you see as the white part. Gotcha. And, um, and, from this particular point, the, you already have an idea of what the work's going to come out to be. You have a, a, a plan A to plan Z, right? I do, and I'll, I'll have, you know, I'll, I'll kind of talk about that later in my, okay. in, in my slideshow. But, um, you know, I, I have a plan. I have, you know, it's either a, it's an idea or a memory that I'm thinking about. It's a sketch that I've been made. It's an interaction I've had with somebody. It's a model. It's a look that somebody 
has that I'm looking for. It's a, a family member. And then, you know, I have an idea of it, but the process definitely directs that as I go through a lot of different processes as, as I'm making work. Great. Thanks. Um, so once again, just like, you know, capturing different, different parts of the body and um, trying to document that. Um, <laughs> That's great. This is actually Mark Pizer, um, who's, uh, who's my, one of my heroes in glass, has been a mentor, or a teacher. It's helped me a, a lot in a lot of aspects of my work. I got another question from the audience about your choice to work with m people as models versus creating cast models yourself. What is, what is your motivation there? It's just, what are your thoughts? I'm not sure, but I'm not sure what that question means. So instead of using, oh. using, using real people as your models versus making them yourself, like if you were well, to sculpt somebody. You know, I, earlier work was all sculpted work that mm -hmm. I made a mold off of. And, you know, sometimes I use them, you know, I, I do an original life cast off of a model and then sculpt that, sculpt into that. Um, the one thing about, um, one thing that about my work that I feel is very successful or special or has a quality to it is that when you, tr when you capture something in a life cast and then you sculpt over that, or let's say you sculpt a, a piece of clay, you, you don't get the essence of life in there that is trapped. Like the, 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 the visual map of somebody's face or the lines or their, you know, the, the, the actuality of what they're, their the physical details is the information on their skin and trapping that there's a quality to that that I really appreciate when I start sculpting and I, I I feel I'm a pretty good sculptor when I start sculpting and even stuff that I think is sculpted really well to me starts to look a very Roman bust ish or almost caricaturesque caricaturesque ish um and so um I'm looking for that like serenity, that like that reality of life in my molds. So that's why I use a life cast. Thank you. And also for that experience that we talked about earlier. Um, and to, to stay within that tradition of, you know, life models and, and documentation and observance. Um, so this photo just gives you an example of some of the sizes of my molds. These are, these are kind of like not huge molds, but these aren't small ones either. So these are like average size molds for me. For those who don't know, who's that in the background of your photo there? That's my wife. <laughs> so all my equipment is um, kind of is built by me um, as for basically to support what I'm making. So, you know, like the kilns are very versatile. I built a furnace that tilts um, so I can pour glass directly into molds. Um, I make most of my own glass, 75 to 80% of the glass that I use is made by me with the direction and help of Mark Pizer. Um, so um, I'll just talk about my work for a little while. The, you know, this is a piece called Float. I think, I feel like I have a couple different um, bodies of work. This, uh, the next couple images I'll show you is, is more of a whimsical work. It's based on a memory as a childhood memory. It's a, it's something that's a little bit more lighthearted. It's really kind of the essence of capturing um, of nostalgia. Um, and so this is, you know, she's blowing a bubble. It's a cast, silver cast bubble wand and it's blown glass bubbles that are around her and she's just, blown this this bubble and she's kind of like you know watching it float or pop in the air or land on a surface and it's kind of capturing that kind of um that feeling and one thing that's really important to me in my work is that the, the work looks painterly so you know how the glass is cast or how it's finished um i'm really interested in like the, you know the line qualities in there the roughness of it and so I really want to capture the, the details of the physical form and the face and what's in there. And like, I really, I'm really interested in capturing that life, but I also am at, interested in capturing this uh, a sculptural quality to it as well to stay in that tradition of, of what I feel is like traditional artwork and um, sculpture. 
Um, so another one uh, that is in that vein for the love of the game, being on the ball field as a kid, um, playing at the park um, in, a, in, a, in a summer shirt and there's some sort of like um, abstract form in the, in the background that could be a logo to his team or um, a logo to a team he inspires or something that he um, you know, has on his hat or his shirt uh, it's kind of just in the background on his mind and he's you know, maybe playing for that or trying to play against that or um, so something again that's whimsical and lighthearted um, an aspect of my work that um, Um, again, you know, this idea of innocence, capturing something that's innocence, this is titled Wildflower. Um, it's very, it's almost like a chalk white or a soapstone, something that's, that's, um, that's, that's, that's kind of soft to the eyes. Um, she's in a summer dress. She has kind of, she's in a, she's in a, um, a pose of reflection of something that's of security, of, of feeling safe, um, so again, a, a piece that's in that, that vein of being kind of whimsical and um, something about nostalgia. My, um, my slideshow is moving very slow. I'm like pushing the button, but it doesn't want to move. Um, and so this one, this is actually a favorite piece that I've made. Um, it's called Older Sister. It's, um, so she's interacting with her younger sister that's kind of, um, uh, it's a given that she's there, she's not present, but she's, you know, in the, in this kind of form of, of judging her or ready to say what, what she's, um, um, you know, obviously more superior to, uh, in her thought or how she's going to bark an order or give direction. Um, and she's, she's very, um, she's in this kind of rigid position where she's, she knows, she's knows more than the, the person she's talking to. So she's, this is older sisters. Once again, it's very it's very painterly on top in the way that the glass is cast, and it's very sculpturally. It's it's done very sculptural on the bottom. So it's um. I'm very I'm, like I said earlier. I'm very interested in that this idea of a painter painterly and sculptural um, presence. Um, this is a, a piece I did as a commission um, for. Um, a couple that has a, a large body of um, Mark Pfizer's work. And so they wanted me to make a piece of him to go along with their collection that they could donate to the actual art museum. Um, and so what they wanted was they wanted something that was in the vein of showing, you know, the quality of, of you know, Mark mixes all his own glass. So this is all glass that I made. Um, and it goes into from a very transparent glass to a very opal glass to a very opaque glass, kind of showing the three different glasses. And if you walk around the piece, it kind of has the, the presence of a mountainscape across his back. It kind of turns into a mountainscape that, that looks like you're looking into a mountainscape and it has um, kind of clouds moving across his head because Mark lives in the in Blue Ridge Mountains. So I was in a, uh, you know, one of the commissions I did. This is um, a, a piece um, that I, I titled um, Girl, uh, Girl with a Hat. It was kind of in, in, uh, in the essence of uh, Girl with the Pearl Earring. Once again, like relating to painting. Um, um, it, uh, it's again showing um, or illustrating like my, my interest in traditional painting and the history of, of portraiture and sculpture and like trying to be in line with that as a, as a contemporary artist. Um, this is um, a piece titled, um, and sorry, I could not travel both. It's from a Robert, Robert Frost poem, um, uh, The Road Not Taken. So it's about the matriarch. It's, uh, it's modeled after um, the, the life uh, casts off of uh, uh, my wife's grandmother. So someone who kind of uh, um, has um, the pieces is about someone who is, um, has chosen a road to cultivate and to like raise family and to um, uh, kind of give up other aspects of, of life to, um, to, you know, um, give to others. To, uh, you know, to the life chosen she had to give up. There's a TV show coming out about this right now too, about a, guy who had a choice to be a family man or a rock star and um you've seen previews for it and this piece is very powerful the same kind of mentality where she chose a path in life 
that she couldn't travel both. I had I had Dean explain the piece to me a while back, and it's it's an it's a great story. And it's, uh, you know, it's very it's kind of like I'm I'm really interested in like the surface finishing of it. So like the surface finishing has been kind of like eroded. So it really brings out like the wrinkles in her face, um, the quality of her hair. It's been kind of drilled. So there's like, it looks like it's kind of starting to been eaten away a little bit. So um, I really like the, the surface qualities that I can achieve through, you know, techniques that you would do with wood or steel, you know, literally pummeling them with sand or drilling or sanding with, you know, pads or whatnot. Um, this one too, I really, um, some of my favorite work that I've, um, that I've made also is, is of older people because it really does have that presence of the physicality, what the, what the information on your skin it offers. Um, and so this one was also uh, based on a piece of literature, uh, Mikhail uh, Bolkoff's book, The Master of the Margarita. It's a line in there, what would the earth look like if all those shadows disappeared? So this was a kind of a, of a man that I met that was that lives on the outskirts of society. He kind of um, he's just someone that is always always there, but um, I never really met. And so a lot of these models that back to the question about using a life model, it's it's really developing a relationship with someone, getting to know them, um, and then using them as a model. It would be interesting if you took the time to do someone young, and then thirty years, forty years later, did them old. Put the well, pieces together. <laughs> my sister's my sis talking about earlier how you said you know discovering me at a at a show that was at my friend's show in Fire Nation in Toledo, Ohio. I had a piece there that I made for the for the Muskegon Art Museum, um, and it was of my niece and my nephew. Um, uh, and so I I already have pieces of them multiple times throughout their lives. Mm. Uh, they're older now. That was when they were much younger, and now they're in their you know late teens, 20s. So I'll have multiple molds made of them. Mm, that's cool. As they grow up. And that, you know, I hope to do that with other people as well. Um, based on a Leonard Cohen poem um, uh, song, Dance Me Till the End of Love, this is Till I'm Gathered Safely In. So it's like, you know, the, there's the, the whiz, whimsical aspect of my work, but then there's also, um, stuff that's kind of based on, you know, more traditional artwork or literature and trying to capture a feeling that goes along with that artwork or literature and um, being in line with this, this sense of, 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 of traditional sculpture and painting. Um, yeah, I see some paint on her elbow, is that? That's actually that? glass. And that's another is thing that, that's important to me is like blurring the lines from what I paint and what is glass. So mm. sometimes I make the glass look very painterly and sometimes I make the paint look like it's glass and you can't tell where the line is where what is paint and what is what is glass um so I enjoy that because it's also of the process of using paint and using glass in a painterly way so actually this piece has no paint on it except for some dark washes to bring out like the you know the, the inner parts of her eyes and, the, and her hairline mm. Um, this is a piece called Light, um, going back to, again, talking about the, the, the idea of a life model. This was a person um, named True Kelly, who's actually the niece of Jean Kelly. Um, and she, um, she is, uh, was a, a figure in, in, at Penland that everyone knew about and talked about. Um, and I kept hearing her name and how wonderful she was, and I wanted to meet her. And um, so I wrote her a letter saying, you know, if you want to do a life cast, um, I, I'd really like to meet you. And... Um, she was like, sure, and we talked, and she is, winds up being this fantastic person that is, you know, talks with her hands a lot. She is, she's been a clown, a dancer, a teacher, an artist, a photographer, and she considers herself a healer, which I believe she is. She's, um, I've had pain in my back and my neck, and she's literally one little touch, and it's like you feel this energy that's um, pretty overwhelming and amazing. Um, so this was a kind of a piece about her. So I um I did uh, I did a series and I'll, I'll probably continue to do work like this. Um, that's really kind of trying to get back into two dimensional work that is that has a relief aspect to it. Um. 
that's on different surfaces, whether like this one is metal, whether it be metal or canvas or wood and um, having a, a, you know, a, kind of a, a very minimal difference in plane and how I'm using the plane, how I'm using the negative space in the background, but really just, and just using a piece of glass as the, as something that's a relief, but then going back to those influences of like um, life drawing and Egon Schiele and people that are doing figurative sketches and studies um, to just um, suggest what the body is or what the body is doing or um, so it's, it's kind of like a finished study is how I would classify this, this body of work. I had a question about um, your surface quality is so fantastic and lends so much to your work. What type of paint do you use for your washes? Mostly all oil. Um, I use all oil or like pencil and charcoal pencil um, when I'm when I'm finishing, like after I've done, you know, with this, with this kind of work and even on the glass, once I'm finished with the glass and it's all sanded and hand sanded and I've got it to a polish that I want to put on it before I put like any kind of coating on there, it's always either oil or pencil that it's finished with. Gotcha. Do you have to seal the oil in any way or just? Um, I put like a, I do put a sealer on there on the oil. Um, but I mean, you know, egg tempera paintings on, you know, in the, in the mosques, uh, you know, in, in all of history, none of that was really ever sealed and it's lasted longer than a right. life, <laughs> lifetime. Um, so this is, um, this is a piece um, about a, a friends of mine that are married couple that I wanted to uh, explore just using um, facial uh, tonalities in glass. So this is all, there's no paint in this. This is all just glass and trying to figure out the different tones um, by using multiple different um, similar tones in glass. This is called Better Half. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm interested in doing wall pieces as well. This is another wall piece of, of my sister's. Um, and using just um, two different tones of like, of like a very uh, warm white. It has little bits of paint in it as well. Um, this is a piece called um, Evening Star. It's uh, going back to that idea of, uh, you know, kind of a macabre style, but something that's you know, in the in the in the um, line of something that's serene and reflecting, but also there's a macabre um, presence to it of something that's you know maybe not right or something that's um, that could be dark, um, but it's also something that has a serenity to it. So I like doing things that are a little bit um, that that is that is very representational, um, but also that has aspects of it that raise questions. Um, so this is just uh, I'm going to give you a couple of little processes of you know of just a thought process that I do when I'm when I'm making a piece. So this is um, this was a, a a model that I chose to make a piece. Um, and, you know, we were, you know, we, we kind of decided on like a pose that we wanted or something that we wanted to capture. Um, starting with uh, taking that, you know, taking that impression off of him. Um, and then making a wax, you know, sculpting the wax, joining it with clay, refining all that, and then coming out with the piece, you know, after we've thought about what kind of glass we're gonna use and how we want the glass to look. Um, here's another one of uh, something larger with more body in it. Um, so, you know, selecting a model, thinking of a pose, making the, making the, get, capturing the life form off of it, making the wax in multiple parts, putting those, you can see the different wax sections to the left of her on the first piece and putting all those sections together and then figuring out how you're going to chop those pieces up and make 
different pieces that then get fit together. So there's a lot of processes to, um, involved in it. Mostly what I'm working in is wax, but I'm also working in clay as well. And then, you know, the final piece, this is um, something that I eventually want to do a series of work um, on. It's, a, it's like the title of it is, uh, is a Candy on a Stick. So it's, uh, it's about food for thought, using an image that's a mundane image, something that you see every day, something that you're very aware of, like somebody sucking on a lollipop. That could raise a lot of questions. It could have to do with um, um, sexuality. It could have to do with mortality. It could have to do with something just... Um, something that's whimsical, something that's just fun, something that's, um, that just is meaningless. Um, and so it's a, it's a piece that once it's, once it's done, um, you know, it raises questions to me about, is it, is it sexy? Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it something that looks, uh, that is um, raising questions about death? Is it something that's raising questions about integrity or um, self-awareness? Is she reflecting? Is she trying, you know, is she trying to engage the viewer or am I engaging the piece? It's just, to me, it's a, it's a simple image that can raise a lot of different questions about myself as an artist, as the onlooker, as an audience, or, you know, the, the person that modeled for the piece in general. Um, this is a newer piece, a piece that uh, just finished. Um, it's called Winter Boy. Um, it's kind of in that nostalgic vein of, you know, um, being young and thinking about a, a season like winter going out and playing or sledding playing in the snow building a snowman having a snowball fight sledding um, and it's the it's done um, in uh, three different glasses that it was kind of challenging and uh, um, putting glasses on top of one another so um, the hat is very uh, opalescent and then it kind of goes into an opaque and then builds back into like a transparent opaque glass again um, so it goes through a, a kind of the, the glossy qualities of uh, transparency to opaque, um, and then paint is added as well to the face. Um, Summer Shades, another new piece um, in that whimsical vein of, um, of uh, you know, having daughters and getting all dressed up and being like a cool dude. Um, you know, wearing uh, their decoration in her dress and her, there's kind of the, the, there's some light reflecting off of her glasses and she's got a little uh, barrette in her hair, little bows on her, on her, um, on her, the, the lace of her dress. Yeah, we do this every day. My daughter chooses which dress she wants to wear today. Uh, multiple, <laughs> times, multiple times a day, Aaron. Right, right. We'll multiple times. Day. <laughs> Um, so this is another newer pay piece that um, kind of goes away from that whimsy a little bit. Um, this one is my ABCs. So it's, um, it's a, a, a girl sitting at a, a school desk with a, a book. And um, I don't have a good image of the, uh, an above view of this, but the book under her arm says this book belongs to. And then there's a lot of crossed off and scratched off of who that actually the book belongs to. Obviously she's using it on the desk. There's a lot of scratched off imagery and like scratched off things that are on the desk um, that could be, um, you know, there's, it looks like there could be a skull on there. There could be a penis, there could be a gun. There could be a, this idea of religion. There's like a cross on there. So it's like her and they're kind of scratched off. And um, so the idea behind this piece was, um, you know, my ABCs and what, what, what little kids are soaking up around them, what they're, what they're aware of, what's in their, what's in their vicinity and how they, you know, remember it and kind of makes them who they are. So I'm going to finish with two, um, two projects that I'm working on right now. This is um, a project that I've been working on for a while. It should have been done already. It's actually going to be done by next week because um, they're um, it's getting picked up on October 13th. Um, it's for, uh, 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 non-for-profit organization in New Jersey for, um, for inner city youth. Um, and it's, uh, they do a lot of glass there. Um, they do other crafts as well, but glass is their main thing. Um, they had a private funder that commissioned a piece from me for the, for the school. And it's going to go in a new building, um, with COVID happening and everything that's gone on, the, 
everything's behind schedule and, and over budget. So it's, it should have been done already and the building should have been done, but the building is still not done and it's all kind of going on, but they are going to pick it up this next week. So we decided on what we kind of wanted. We wanted the two um, youth um, people, two students of their organization um, blowing glass. And we decided on like um, being at the bench together um, I made the molds, I, we chose the models, we made the molds of, of, of from life. Um, you can see this top photo is like the, the original picture and then that recreated in wax on the bottom. Um, it was a, one of the biggest projects I've ever done. So we, we dealt with, I made all the own, my own glass. So this is showing just a couple samples. I made a hundred samples of different colors in glass, different browns, probably 35, 40, upwards of that, different shades of brown, transparent, opaque, opal, um, different um, sheens of black, um, different blues, uh, yellows, all these different colors that I worked out, which was um, very difficult, very challenging. Um, so I recreated the, the scene in wax and then made the molds, figured out the glass, recast it in, in glass, um, and this is it kind of getting to completion. I don't have a final photo of it yet. It's going to be photographed next week and then I'll have a final photo and I'll share that on social media or something. This is the work that's taken you a while. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's life scale and it's, um, you know, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of clear glass in it and then there's a lot of opaque glass and then there's a, there's a couple pieces of like opal glass in there. Um, but it's life scale, it'll sit on a pedestal that's, you know, eight by eight feet by five feet. Um, so it's a, it's a large piece. Everybody's asking if this is solid and I believe it, it is. is. Um, so, uh, so most of, a lot of my work is solid. A lot of it is like hollow cast. So that his, the boy's shirt is hollow. Um, his head is cast. So this is cast in parts and then assembled. So his head is, is, is cast, um, is solid. His shirt is hollow. The arms are are solid. Her body, the midsection of her body, is hollow. Um, her legs are solid, and then the upper part of her her um, upper part is is um, there's like a big uh, hollow cavity on that upper part um, that has like you know different um, pegging in there to assemble it. So it's kind of when, you're, when, the, when there's a light, direct light on it, you can see through the piece, like you, his, his shirt is very transparent, her, her midsection is very transparent um, and her legs are transparent and you can kind of, um, you can kind of obscurely see some peg work in there, but it's, um, it's all clear. Is there some uh, designation, designation you decide when you're figuring out which parts should be hollow, which parts aren't? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going through, uh, you know, I, I make some sketches and I take the photographs and then I, I draw on the photographs and I color those photographs and I try to determine what is, you know, going to look good with all that said and with all the, the, the prep that's go, that I, I do, the, the process takes it somewhere that's, that's never totally what I'm expecting or what I've planned. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the process and what, you know, making glass and annealing glass and finishing glass always kind of changes it a little bit, but I'm, um, you know, I have all that thought of, I, you know, I'm, I'm planning that it just never quite happens exactly how it's planned. Gotcha. So one of the founders of, um, uh, Dina Lowenbach, who is one of the original founders of Glassroots mentioned to me that they commissioned this from you in yeah. celebration of their wonderful accomplishments that the Grassroots has done in the greater New York area celebrating you know the the result of their participation in the, in the classes with the community so i'm excited about this and uh, and i'm looking forward to seeing it appear in in, in the glass new facility is twenty thousand square feet you know sent me a message and it's great to be part of that and anybody wants to know about where it's going to end up is welcome to contact me or dina um and I'd definitely put you in connect and connect you to to watch this piece finally come to fruition which i'm insanely excited about because i know you've worked incredibly hard on this my friend well and when this is in its in its home and its new space and we'll have an opening and we'll do you know we'll have we'll hopefully like let everybody know so if anybody wants to attend that opening and see the piece um we, we'd love to have you there um so that will probably be in the spring or the or the summer of next year 
depending on when the space is completed. Sounds good. There, this work has open eyes, right? This work has open eyes. So yeah. we talk a little bit about that. So they have they have open eyes, and they also have like um, this is not um, showing the you know completed, but it, it will have glass insert. It has glass inserts in his eyes now, um, so they look you know it has that appearance of you know almost a real eye in there. It has like the sheen of glass coming off of its pupil. Um, so I mean the the idea of uh, you know an eye is 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 there's a lot there is, you know, if your eye is closed, you're reflecting inward or you're taking a moment for yourself or you're resting. If your eyes open, then you're looking at something or you're aware of your surroundings or you're, um, or you're looking at some, you're observing something. So as a viewer approaching a piece, you're obviously looking at something and you're judging and you're putting perceptions and you're taking in information. Um, so if, if the viewer's eyes, if my piece in the piece, if the eyes closed, then that, that allows you, um, you know, the chance to not be confronted by, by the, the person's eyes and just to, to take that information in and to their eyes are used as kind of a curtain to separate the awareness of you and the self-reflection of them their eyes are open and they're they're more engaged in something in their surroundings so with this with this piece they're you know they're 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 makers that's probably the title of this piece is makers and they're um they are engaged in the equipment around them he's engaged in the the you know her orders of what he's blowing into the pipe being the assistant and she's engaged in the equipment her next move you know what she's going to do with the glass that's going to be uh, on the end of that pipe that she'll have in her hand Gotcha. Got another question for you. Don't mind about uh, uh, the size you you approach. I know you have, but have you ever tried other sizes than life size? You know, that's a good question. Um, I um, I in my earlier work before I got into you know really kind of life casting and this um, idea of portrait sculpture. Everything was hand sculpted, so I did do a lot of like you know smaller work or like bigger than life-size work because it was sculpted out of clay. Um, and I've experimented with materials that, that shrink um, the casting and then, you know, blow up the casting. Um, that's another step that goes to another whole, um, that's, my work is already very time consuming. So it brings another whole step of, of time into it. And I don't think it, to me, it doesn't add any value to it being larger at this point or smaller. So I haven't pursued that as of now. Um, in the future, definitely, it's a challenge to make things that are smaller or bigger from a life cast. So in the future, I'm hoping my work gets more dynamic. I'm hoping that there's a, a, a way to engage the, the viewer more with it. And, you know, not only to continue with this, this like act of um, traditional portraiture and sculpture and painting, but to, to make it smaller, to make it more accessible, to make it larger, to make it um, um, maybe more public. Um, so those are all in my thoughts for sure. Thank you. Um, and the most recent and final project that I'm, uh, that I'm working on right now is I'll end with that. Um, this is uh, my daughter. She's four now. I have two daughters. I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, and she at two, she was already doing like almost full scale life molds from, for me. Um, so this is one of her doing a full head mold, which is amazing because she's, <laughs> you know, the fact that she did that. Um, but what we, I wanted to make, um, when me and Aaron first started talking about the show, I had some ideas of things that I wanted to make. And throughout just the last year or two, I've just kind of, um, there's a lot of discouragement in, um, in making and what is art and what's worthwhile making. Um, and so this was a piece that when my, um, my aunt was sick with a glioblastoma during COVID. We could all we could only visit her through the nursing home window, um, and so eventually, right before she died, we were people over eighteen were able to go in and see her. But my daughter was never able to do that. So we took a bunch of pictures based on this theme that we wanted to make, and this is the piece in process right now. So it's um, it's a you know her in glass with her hands up against the win window. Um, and then the viewer will be invited to sit next to that window and have a visit. And she will also have her eyes open and her eyes will be glass. Hmm. 
So once again, this is in process, but this, um, the piece will be um, um, something that hopefully is a little bit more interactive to the, to the person that's approaching there. Hopefully it's, you know, you, you're, you, you sit down and you can kind of um, have this, this time against the window. And to me, it's very important that the glass is obstructed. Um, glass is, you know, throughout time has all, always been a material that's held up a, a, on a higher standard. So it's this, it's, you know, life made out of glass and um, it has that quality of, of something that's raised up and it's, you know, you can't quite see the whole thing because it's obstructed by a, um, a mundane window. Getting um, some comments about how personal the piece is and fantastic it is. This particular piece, is it, uh, I'm assuming it fit be on a pedestal, right? Where the pedestal so, and the so the, the this piece the 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 the, the um, piece of glass her the the, per, the little person and the the window will fit on a will be on like a, a low pedestal It'll probably be on like a two foot pedestal okay um, like twenty five inches and so when you sit on the chair you're literally like looking right at her gotcha so it's straight on mm -hmm. very cool and um, thanks for giving us the glimpse into your studio in this process oh look at these two. Yeah. And then those are my, my girls. I'll have to with that. So I really appreciate you guys joining me. Um, I know it's Saturday afternoon and it's getting cold and it's nice out hopefully by all you guys. So I really appreciate all your time. Thank you. And I got another question from the audience. Um, let me see if I can find it. How are you, how much control are you able to have with the multiple layers of cast glass? Um, that's a good question. Um, I am, um, I'm an artist. Um, I am a facilitator and technician, secondly. Um, and I have a lot of uh, connections of people that are much smarter than me, like Mark Pizer. Um, so I do have theoretically a lot of control, but glass is so, um, so technical and difficult that it's, uh, it's a lot of failure in that, in those processes. Um, so, uh, that's just really hard to answer. There's a lot yeah. of failure. Yeah. So the answer is some. <laughs> right. Um, well, if, if I missed any of your questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask now. Um, thank you for everybody for joining us today and getting a glimpse into the world of Dean Allison, our, our presenter for uh, October for this long exhibition. I'm going to have you stop sharing so we can all see each other. You know, there's a I, I, I know you have done commissions of individuals, people in the glass art community, family members, friends, the potential. Did I stop sharing? Yeah, you got to stop. I stopped it for you. Uh -huh. the, um, the work that you do is incredible. And uh, I know if people can see his presentation on his website, on the Not Grandma's Glass website, in the gallery itself and around the world. I know one of the, one of the earliest pieces I sold of yours was to a client named um, Eugene uh, Fisher who donated his collection to the Augusta Morris Museum in Augusta, Georgia. And I wanna go out there and see it, man. I wanna, I wanna see your work in more institutions and in, in more public spaces, as you mentioned. And we're here to help and get the word out. And, and uh, we're big believers in you and many of the artists in our family, but you know, it's it, it just your talent is astounding and I'm grateful to have you in our family, man. Thanks for being here today. Appreciate it. And thanks everybody for joining me in, in, in this, in this Fun celebration of Dean and Not Grandma's Glass October. We'll see you again as we pierce through the rest of this year and meet up in November. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. We'll have some more presentations. I'll keep you updated on that. And again, thanks for, for joining me. Have a great Saturday, everybody. And we'll talk more soon. Thanks, Excellent work, Dean. Thank Excellent you. Great body of work, Dean. Thank you guys so much. Fabulous. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.